Hello, my name is Tim Adams and I'm an ENA product specialist here at Schaeffler. Today I'd like to run through the time about setup procedure on the Ford 1.8 TDCI engine. This is the engine that's commonly fitted in your Ford Focus, Mondeo, Transit Connect and Galaxy. Actually looks quite a simple system, uh, but if the procedure isn't followed to the letter, this is one that will come back to haunt you later on. Uh, this is an unusual engine in as much that you have a timing belt on the top part of the engine and a timing chain or a belt running in oil on the bottom part from the crankshaft to the fuel pump. It's very difficult to identify which you have uh, because it changed around 2008. To identify exactly, the best way is to remove your power steering pump and then take out the tensioner which sits just above it. Now the way to tell which system you have fitted is to remove the tensioner. If the system is fitted with a belt in oil it will have a flat top, easy to remember because the belt is flat. If the system fitted is a timing chain then it will have a domed top and it is usually black. That will tell you definitively which system you have in the bottom. The change frequency is the same for the timing belt and for the chain or the belt in oil and it's 125,000 miles or 10 years for the Focus and Mondeo and 150,000 miles for the Transit Connect. Now just before we do the timing belt setup, let's have a look at a previous failure so you can see what happens when it goes wrong. On this system it always ends up with the belt trying to ride over the camshaft gear which shreds the belt, pushes it into the covers which will wear the covers away and then of course the tensioner loses its tension and the tab will spin behind undoing it and wrecking the engine in the process. Okay so I've now got my engine at ambient temperature. I've put it in a position so I'm just coming up to top dead centre uh, on the crankshaft and we're now going to fit the locking and locating tools onto the engine. So I'll pop my socket onto the crank. So now I'm going to remove the blanking plug from the block and we're going to fit the crankshaft locating pin. Now you notice I didn't say locking pin. As you can see this is a tapered pin and it's just for the crank to come up and touch against it so we know we have it in roughly the right position. We will then fit the second locking device. So we screw that in there into the block all the way in and then I'll turn the engine over clockwise until the crank rests against the pin. Next we need to remove the starter motor and fit the flywheel locking tool. This will stop the engine from moving. Next you fit the camshaft locking tool to the slot which is horizontal in the back of the camshaft. The plate sits against the cylinder head and into the slot to stop the camshaft moving. I'm now going to slacken the tensioner and then I need to hold the camshaft gear while I crack the bolt and release it. I will then fit the camshaft gear puller and we will move it off the taper so it can revolve but not wobble. I'm now going to remove the tensioner and the belt but just before I put the new belt on and tensioner I just want to show you why we're releasing the camshaft gear. If I just pop this off you 
you will see that the camshaft is on a taper. Okay. So I'm now going to fit the new timing belt and tensioner. So I'm checking the direction of rotation is going this way. There aren't any timing marks on the belt, so we're okay just to put that on. So we start off, the top run of the belt is the really important part. This must be held tight on the top span. I then put the tensioner on with the installation eccentric, the Allen key part, at three o'clock. This is the start position for the tension procedure. I like to just tighten them up and then just give them a tiny amount of slack so it's moving. I'm now turning the camshaft to hold that tight on the top run before I start the next part of the procedure. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the tensioner. So we're starting off the three o'clock position and I'm going to turn the tensioner anti-clockwise. Now the reason we've slackened off this camshaft gear, as you'll see in a second, as I come up here, you'll see it start to move. If this was locked, you wouldn't be able to get that slack out of the belt. So we're going to just hold that at the top so that the top run is tight. We turn the tensioner anti-clockwise and you'll now see the pointer start to move clockwise. You'll notice in your auto data setup pictures, if you're using auto data, it will show a picture of this arrow going clockwise, which can suggest turn the tensioner clockwise. This is not the case. You just may need to make sure the needle is moving towards the center of the slot in a clockwise direction. Once we have the tab set to the center of the two slots, we torque the tensioner. And we're torquing this to 50 newton meters. We then torque the camshaft gear. And again, 50 newton meters. We hold it with the counter hold tool. Okay, so I'm happy I've set my tensioner to nominal. I've torqued up my tensioner and my camshaft gear. I'm now going to remove all the tools, my flywheel tool and my crankshaft locating pin and I'm going to revolve the engine six times clockwise and just bring it just before top dead center so that I can then use my locating pin again and just bend the crankshaft over to that. The flywheel tool must go in again and also the camshaft tool must slide in easily in the slot on the back of the engine. If none of the tools fit or anything goes wrong, you must take them all off and start the procedure again. Okay, so let's have a look now at what can go wrong. Okay, so if I slacken the tensioner off again, let's just have a look at that side of it. So as I said, we'll start at the three o'clock position. Now, as I said from the auto data picture showing this clockwise arrow, if you were to turn that clockwise, you will see this gap here get very, very tight. The wrap angle is now really acute. You can turn this round, it will still tension the belt, but what's happened is now you have no gap here at all. And this will start the process of the belt trying to ride up over the camshaft gear. So it's really important you get that side right. So it's anti-clockwise to set it up, but the pointer must go clockwise. The other thing to be careful of is the indicator line here. That effectively is the worn out position when the, the belt has done all its life, it will end up down here. So you do not need to be setting your tensioner up down there. It needs to be with the tab between the two pointers. When this operates normally it runs approximately six degrees of movement. It would just rock backwards and forwards between those tabs. As with any engine time and setup, we recommend following the 4T process. First T being temperature. Before you work on any engine, it needs to be at room temperature, ambient temperature, 18 to 20 degrees. 
this is probably represent letting the engine stand for up to four hours. The second T is tools. Some of these you will already have and you can use on multiple engines, but some are engine specific and it is critical on certain applications that you use the correct tools. Torque is the next T and this must be applied to each of the tensioner or idlers fitted to the timing system, plus the degrees where they're shown. And the final one is tension. The tension procedure must be followed to the letter to ensure that a good outcome is achieved. Okay, so that's the setup for the Ford 1.8 TDCI engine. I hope you found that useful. If you need any additional information, please go to repexpert.co.uk or give us a call on our technical hotline. Thanks for watching.